Hi Puzzles and Pieces, this is Jess from Multiplicity and Me, a channel giving you the lived experience of DID, otherwise known as Dissociative Identity Disorder. As some of you may have seen on my Instagram a couple of months ago, I wasn't really sure about what to do with this channel or my pages since I fully recovered from the disorder and I wanted kind of your views on which direction that I could potentially go next. You know, should I continue to post stuff or should I basically leave the channel as it was? I still haven't really decided. But regardless, I know I absolutely couldn't leave without making sure that this bit of information was out there because in terms of my mental health journey, it just changed my whole perspective entirely. It was an extremely important mental health model, uh, or a theory, I should say, that I didn't learn about until my postgrad, so it was never taught to me in my years of therapy. But once I had learned it, I felt way more in control. I finally felt like I had a bit of a connection or empathy and understanding between what my brain and my body were actually doing. For me it was such a key moment in my mental health recovery and it's certainly a tool that I now continue to pass on. So um, you know I've passed it on at primary care level when I've worked with people with anxiety or um, stress in general right up until now where I'm also applying it in secondary care with the people that I work with with trauma and dissociation. It's just such a good tool to know and I think it's something that should have been taught in schools quite frankly. I felt like I could finally make sense of my symptoms whereas prior to this I'd spent like every day being like why is this happening to me? So let's get into it. What is this fancy theory that was never taught to me by therapists? I've egged it up so much now though I hope it doesn't disappoint. So let me give you the crash course. I apologise if I go too fast or if you think that I'm missing anything out. And I also want to give absolutely full disclosure that I am absolutely not here to replace any mental health professional that you're working with. Please take everything that I say with a pinch of salt and absolutely apply your own critical judgement and research as you should for any of these videos that you see online. Unless you go somewhere like the CTAC clinic where you know that that information is definitely coming from a registered mental health professional in the UK. So the window of tolerance is a theory that essentially explains how we respond and cope with stress. I usually draw this out, so I feel like I should get a piece of paper. Hang on. Okay, I've got like <laughs> some canvas paint. I've got some canvas paper and my kid's pen, so hopefully it'll come up okay. So, window tolerance theory. This is our window of tolerance. Does that come up okay? Is that enough? The window of tolerance is essentially how well that we can regulate and cope with stress. So, it comes from the back of the brain, down the vagus nerve, and the vagus nerve sends signals. So, it sends adrenaline and cortisol up through the body to tell us how stressed that we are. Now for folks without sort of trauma or general psychological distress, their day might look, you know, like this, they have good days and bad days, all right days, but usually they're well within the middle of their window of tolerance. It feels manageable because stress isn't always a detrimental thing. And in fact, stress is part of our survival mechanism that we've had since we first walked the earth. So in a way, we've got to learn to love it, got to learn to accept it. We have stress, we will absolutely have it but it's when it becomes like problematic that obviously we need the support for it. So when you do have a lot of stresses going on, this can be in the past or in the present, you know, your stress will add up and up and up. And essentially what you're left with is this much space left to cope as opposed to like the space that you had before. When you're here, you're essentially running in the red zone. Um, so the red zone is when you're going to start to get side effects of too much adrenaline and cortisol in your system. On the one hand, we've got our fight and flight symptoms. So fight and flight are up here. This is kind of like our on switch. Fight mode can look like irritability, snappiness, being confrontational, feeling really tense within your body, wanting to punch out or hit out at others. And our flight mode is then like more akin to the anxiety side. So we're looking at symptoms like hypervigilance, you know, nervous tummy, um, needing to urinate more frequently, feeling sick, being sick, jelly legs, lump in the throat, tightness in chest, shaking, like the symptoms can really go on and on. And it's different for everybody. Panic attacks and hyperventilation too. This is like our caveman instincts of running away from a saber-toothed tiger or confronting it. 
The fancy name for our on switch is hyper arousal. And then we have our off switch. So there are kind of a couple of names given to this, but I just go by freeze and the form response. Okay, so we've got our on switch, which is the fight and flight, and our off switch, which is the freeze and fawn. We see this more in lots of situations where we can't fight or flight. Um, so obviously in places where we're trapped or as a child, if we can't fight and flight, we're more likely to kind of have a dissociative response. By dissociating, it allows us to remove ourselves from the stress or the pain of what's to come. In a milder off switch, we can often kind of see low mood and depressive symptoms here like a hibernation mode so calorie conservation again we're thinking caveman survival mode it's going to be a long winter or there's no food to go around and um you know so our body will automatically give us this kind of instinct to withdraw to calorie conserve you know we'll have low energy low motivation but that kind of feeling of numbness like the worse that it gets the more detached and the more numb you feel the kind of the more dissociative that overall off switch will be there's a really good video actually of uh, a leopard chasing an impala and catching it before it gets scared off this is one that my uh, big boss used to use quite a lot to explain this rationale so i'll link it in the description rather than show it in case it upsets anyone but i promise the impala is okay but you can see the impala looking completely dead when the leopard catches it um, but it's just completely dissociated it's kind of like the the mechanism has accepted it will die so it just switches off and removes it from its pain or perceived pain to come entirely when the leopard leaves you can see the impala get up and start to shake maybe it's the effects of adrenaline or it could be akin to something like a dissociative seizure so what the summary of that is is that this is an automatic response that our body goes into as a form of survival it is a normal reaction to an abnormal situation every symptom in your body has a reason for doing so when it comes to this response you know for those with a developmental trauma when our window of tolerance is kind of always kind of this because of all these stresses in the past it's going to be much easier for us to go into crisis mode and feel like we're straight up into our fight and flight or we're straight down to our freeze and fawn. And we can stay in one zone or we can even flip flop. I would like each day, several times a day maybe. Either way, it's just not sustainable. And this is often when I see people who are just feeling completely out of control with the symptoms that they're presenting with. The good news is, however, that we can expand our window of tolerance. We can learn different tools to become more resilient to stress and anxiety and effectively teach the body that we are safe in the here and now. And as great as it is as having this response to keep us safe at this moment in time, we don't need to use it. And that's something that can be quite difficult to teach our body. In a way, we're kind of overriding that instinct to say, hey, actually, I, I don't need to fight and flight. I don't need to freeze and fall. I am safe right now. So if you have like present stress as well as past trauma, what we tend to say is if we work on the present stress first, it kind of just gives us a little bit more space to like in our window of tolerance to then manage the rest. So that, um, that's often when we do safety and stabilization work before then we bring in trauma processing because otherwise it's gonna feel completely unmanageable and we'll very like quickly likely send us into a crisis. Where might you be in your on switch or your off switch or do you tend to go up and down? One of the most beneficial things that we can do to actually start the healing process is just to simply notice where we might be and what might be going on with our body at the moment. So just to really connect to those symptoms that we might be experiencing and then empathizing with them that our body is seeing our current circumstances as a threat it's a very real threat and therefore it wants to try its best to survive by producing us these hormones and creating these symptoms i thought it would be really fun to test our new knowledge to see how well we can place somebody on the window of tolerance maybe including yourself so i'm going to give some random case examples we'll start with someone called lee so Lee has been experiencing low mood lately, very withdrawn, is feeling sick before he goes to work. So he's like retching a lot, completely off his food. But ultimately, he's withdrawn from a lot of social activities and he's feeling really lethargic and doesn't have much energy. Where do you kind of see Lee on the window of tolerance? 
we would place Lee on a lower side of things. So much more on the freeze and fawn end. But we've also got a little bit here of kind of like feeling sick, maybe being sick. So that would he would also be peeking into his fight and flight. So Lee would primarily be in the low mood range, but we would still say it's low mood and anxiety. And the stress, of course, is beneath it. When we get to know Lee a little bit later on, he sort of tells us that it is work-related stress and he's having a really difficult time with extra pressure being piled on from work. Let's do case two. So we're going to have a lady called Moira. I don't know why that's the first word, like name that comes to my mind, but we're going to go for it. So Moira is in her 50s and she's suddenly experiencing heightened anxiety, irritability, snappiness, aggression, which is like really out of character for her. She's also extremely tearful and she reaches these points where she just can't stop crying. So what do you think we might think about where she, Moira might be on the window of tolerance? We would place her in her fight mode primarily but we also want a bit of an understanding about why she's doing this and we can also note that there's a bit of tearfulness so that would sort of be more in the freeze and fawn mode. She, we would say that she's experiencing kind of anger symptoms but also with some low mood and in Moira's case it's going to indicate something like the menopause. Finally we're going to have Charlie. So Charlie is someone whose trauma has never ever bothered them They've disclosed that recently they've been experiencing panic attacks, nightmares, hypervigilance, very shaky, shivery, hyperventilation. They have feelings of wanting to suddenly run away, completely unlike them. They're not allowed to, or get to like, be in work at the moment because of how they feel. And this is what they've expressed to you. Turns out this these symptoms have all come back for Charlie following an attack that they had in broad daylight and now it's resurfaced a lot of the trauma that they experienced many years ago to actually become problematic. So for Charlie what we can see is that there's lots of up symptoms and there's also lots of down symptoms so they've got like the bigger short well they got the shorter spikes at either end so up in the fight and flight zone and also down in the freeze and fawn zone. I hope that kind of makes a little bit of sense, but that's obviously where we tend to see the window of tolerance sort of displaying more towards something like extreme stress and or trauma. Well done if you got any or all of those right or had a theory about where they could be on the window of tolerance and equally what their potential diagnoses might be or their symptomology, the box that they fit. We don't diagnose, but you know, it gives us an idea of what kind of symptoms we might be treating. And I hope this has kind of helped you fit in your own, like where you might be on your window of tolerance. And I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope this video has been just as helpful to you as it was to me when I was first starting on my mental health journey. I certainly would have appreciated understanding the mechanics of what my body and brain were doing like years ago. If you feel it has been helpful, obviously, please feel free to share the video, pass it along or hopefully you'll be able to reteach that to someone without even having to share the video. Psychoeducation is just such an incredible tool and it really should be given far more frequently than it seems to be. And of course there are a ton of ways to expand your window of tolerance further and if that's something that might interest you guys let me know and I could potentially make a new video on that. <laughs> Certainly not a fancy video maker but again if these videos are helpful let me know and maybe I'll make more. And remember, regardless whether or not you have DID, each part of you deserves self-love, self-care and compassion. Thanks everyone and I hope you're all doing well. Take care. Bye, 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 bye.